Hello, Jan here again and uh, welcome back to my channel and to my new improved pantry tour. Um, we last saw it just a couple of days ago, but since then this unit that you see here um, was stood upright. So it was um, three wide and four tall. And I realised that by turning it to four wide and three tall, I could improve the whole, the whole um, cupboard really. Um, it also meant by moving the pieces that were here out of the way, I could now stack the dog food here, which I've got some of the dog food here. At the bottom, these two at the bottom there are the Sainsbury's own worker dog dog food. And um, worker dog um, kibble is um, higher in protein than standard kibble, but it also you're not paying the 20% VAT on it, so it, it is that much cheaper. And the one that I normally buy is the Harrington's, which you see here. These are two 18 kilogram bags, which I buy on the Amazon subscribe and save. And these two um, were from the last delivery and they were 28 pounds each. They're 18 kilogram bags. But the ones that are coming in a few days time exactly the same item are £34 each so it's had an increase of £6 per bag um, and I very often have a, a stack of dog food um, almost as high as I am which will give me about a year's supply but at the moment um, we've got this much space to grow into with the dog food I've, I've also got another couple um, out on top of the kennel in the hallway at the moment which are Pets at Home Worker Dog Food, which I got on their um, online exclusive offer for £14 for a 15 kilogram bag. Then, as you can see, I've got uh, four bags of rice there. That's the basmati rice. One bag of children, then three of the other Salam brand. And then above that, I've got the Tilda Everyday Rice. And then... Moving into the corner here, I've got, um, this is all sugar in, in this section here. This, uh, that's granulated sugar at the front and then behind it, it's all um, caster sugar, icing sugar, brown sugar, all kinds of different baking sugars. Most of those are left over from a few years ago. I did a, a tea party for Guide Dogs for the Blind and I was baking loads and loads and loads of cakes for the tea party and that's kind of left over from that but sugar itself is a preservative so it won't go off sometimes clumps together but then you just bash it up then the next section on the bottom there is pudding rice on the right hand side is uh just the cheap 45p a kilo um sainsbury's own rice and then on the left um, there's Sainsbury's and Tesco's Arborio Risotto Rice. So that's my kind of specialty rice area. And I found these two um, stacking bits in the loft. I knew that they were there somewhere. And when I put them up there, I thought they will come in handy for something one day. And well, today's the day and here we are. And then um, just popped a chopping board over the top to make a shelf. Um... I've got plenty of space there for um, dried milk powder. I mean, as you can see, it goes back away, so I can afford to get some more dried milk powder there. Then on these shelves, as you've seen before, I've still got the two. Um, you can't see it there. I've had to put the 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 four squares here where the dog food is going to go in front. It's got to be things that I don't need access to all the time for obvious reasons because I'm going to have to move the dog food out of the way to get it um, but we've got um, in the bottom one and the one above that's porridge oats in uh, their one and a half kilogram bags and then above the porridge oats we've got all the pulses so that's red lentils behind the red lentils are green lentils we've got uh, red kidney beans and then dal on the right and then we get to the pasta section so we've got at the bottom we've got penne pasta 
moving up to the um fusilli is it fus fusilli can't remember how you call it but it's the twisty ones then the next section up uh the boxes are all the sunny sheets and then some packs of macaroni and then behind them we've got um i think five or six three kilogram bags of spaghetti and a couple of odd spaghettis on top there i like spaghetti because it it kind of settles down and takes up very little shelf space compared to some of these type of pastas which um I mean, especially this, this is uh, a Tesco's one. The other two are Sainsbury's, but the Tesco's one seems to take up a, more space for the same amount of pasta. I'm not quite sure how that works, but it does. And um, then we get on to, I've moved, um, I had a spare cubby, so I've put some, uh, that's baked beans and chopped tomatoes, or just tinned tomatoes, some whole, some are chopped they go all the way back and then I've been buying loads and loads and loads of sauces which I always keep a good stock of but Sainsbury's have had a, a job for quite a long time now of keeping their own brand pasta sauce in stock but just the last couple of weeks I've been finding these other sauces that I don't know if they've always had them and I've never seen them or if it's new to to the shop but I've certainly not noticed them before but there's a curry sauce which I found, um, I think it was yesterday, that I've never seen before. We've got the butter chicken that I bought a few days ago. The chilli sauces I've never seen before. And then there's, um, oh that one's a, just a, a cheapy pasta sauce. I've also found, um, I think in there somewhere is a sweet and sour sauce which I've not seen. But, you know, with, with all this rice and pasta, I think it's quite important to have something to to flavour it and go with it. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck. I don't fancy just eating dry pasta without anything to go with it. Then this cubby hole um, has been taken out and rearranged when we turn the unit over and I was saying to Neil, I've done it wrong, this is going to annoy me now because I've got the um, hot dogs on the left and the fish on the right and it's going to have to swap over because the one next to it is meat. <laughs> so I want it to go fish, then meats as you go along the shelves there. But we've got hot dogs there, followed by pilchards. We've got pilchards in the smaller tins, pilchards in the bigger tins and behind these smaller tins we've got the sardines. And if you saw my other video where I was saying, are pilchards Cornish sardines or are sardines Cornish pilchards? I, <laughs> so I thought, well, I'm going to look up pilchards and sardines. And apparently it's essentially the same fish. Pilchards are slightly bigger. Sardines are named after Sardinia, where they um, swim in shoals around Sardinia. And I think the Latin name is Pilchardus sardinus or something something like that very similar to that but basically they're pretty much the same fish we've got um, like I say the the larger tins which just have more of them in than the smaller tins then we've got the tiny tins of the sardines which we're I think we were talking about having one of those tiny tins soon to see how much yeah. is in there aren't we yeah it sounds like a good idea to me Always good best to uh, try these Yeah, and to see, you know, because I know that um, a small tin of pilchards will do near near land iron meal. A larger tin will do us for two days meals. Um, the hot dogs, that's um, five hot dogs. That's uh, probably two meals each out of those. I know the bigger size ones. Um, I've been buying some with eight hot dogs in, and that's definitely two meals that's two meals of two for you one for me isn't it yeah but plenty in there anyway um and then loads of tuna the corned beef um if you look up the portion sizes it says there's five portions in a 340 gram tin which is that size um 
Well, I suppose depending on your portion size, but yeah, it probably would do us two days, wouldn't it, for a tin like that? Yeah. I suppose depending on how we eat it, but if we ate it with um, potatoes and vegetables or you something. You'd carbs or something, wouldn't you? Some kind of carbs. Yeah, you'd have some something else with it. And then we've got the spam and the ham and uh, the... That's the Sainsbury's own own version my other pantry tour video that i put up a few days ago i've had a comment on it saying from somebody saying that they'd rather die in a, in a nuclear blast than eat what i've got in my store cupboard but i would remind people that we're not that long past the war the war was only 10 years before i was born world war ii when you know a tin, tin of spam was considered an absolute luxury, when people when meat was rationed, and your your whole week's meat ration was only the equivalent of two lamb chops. So, you know, if if you could get a tin of spam or a tin of corned beef or or this sort of food, then you would be grateful for it. Not say I'd rather die in a nuclear war. I worry about people like that. I really do. But that's their choice, not mine. Then I'm just moving out of the way so I can show you und underneath the spam section. Uh, we've got soups. And as I said last time, I'm not really that fond of tin soup. I'd rather make my own. But again, I'm thinking if we've got to have, um, you know, any of the dried lentils or beans or anything, then perhaps use the soup as a base and add the dried lentils and things to it have it with pasta or with rice and the, the Campbell's condensed soups of course make up into lovely bases for for casseroles and things then down to the bottom I've got tea and coffee and I made a mistake last time I told you that I got six jars of coffee in that size from Amazon and it wasn't Amazon it was Costco so just in case you're looking for that size, that was Costco. Sorry, I need to hoover that bit of carpet. And then coming up a bit, we've got the tinned dog food. I've got a gas meter hidden behind there, so that's why we had to put this unit so far along. Then we've got the flavouring section. So I've got ketchup and salad cream mustards and sauces um the the middle one here has got stock cubes and then behind the stock cubes i've got loads and loads of um tomato puree more mustards and flavoring and in these packets i've got um cardamom i'm the only one in the family that likes them but i'll get them anyway i've got some Mixed mushrooms, dried mushrooms. What else have I got? Um, sushi ginger. So that's just a, a couple of dried bits there. Well, I don't think the ginger's dried, but whatever. Then we've got the tinned pulses and um, beans. So I've got red kidney beans butter beans again as i said before you know woefully inadequate vegetable section all i've got there is sweet corn and carrots i really really do need to work hard on stepping that up although if i do i'm not entirely sure where they'll all go but mostly we um we eat fresh vegetables or if we run out of fresh then we hit the freezer and get frozen vegetables out for dinner so we're not used to to eating this type of vegetables but having said that you know in the future we don't know if we're going to be reliant on this store cupboard as opposed to what we've got in the freezer section so uh this one is um coconut milk and evaporated and condensed milk different kind of milks and things and then on to tinned fruit again not enough not enough to keep us healthy but we've got pineapple fruit cocktail pears i think there's apple in there 
and then a couple of jellies. I think in America you'd know that as jello. And you refer to jam as jelly, I think. You, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but so we've got some jelly there. So because sometimes you just need a sweet treat. So I thought, well, when you only have to add water to it, that's a nice sweet treat. And then there's a a lemon rang pie filling there. I remember years and years and years ago I made one from scratch and it was so much faffing about and it wasn't really that much different from the packet version that my mum always used so I decided to go to buy packet ones. Then I've got some vinegars, um, some salad dressing, there's some camp coffee there, some extra tuna that won't fit in the tuna section. Got some tinned rice pudding, uh, some mayo that won't go in the mayo section in, in the kitchen. Table salt, I think I've got all the uh, the rock salt is in the kitchen and a big tub of Cajun seasoning. So then my absolute bonus area is, I'm gonna to have to climb up on the stool to show you. I'm not very good at climbing. So if we suddenly take a fall together, you'll know what's happened, but no, I'm, I'm up. There we go. This was the shelf where the gas pipe ran through it. And we had to take the brackets off but then it just pushed further up the pipe and then it's sitting quite happily on top of this unit so we, this was the one that was in the corner with the um with the fruits and things in but i've got some peanut butter there and uh that's coconut oil on top of it now anybody who's suffering with any kind of brain fog have a teaspoon of coconut oil it really does make a difference if you Google coconut oil Alzheimer's clock, you'll see um, you'll see a, a how um, somebody had given coconut oil to their husband with Alzheimer's, and the difference that the that having the the oil in his system made to his his brain process. So it's worth Googling that just to see it. I started Neil on that when, um, when he was first symptomatic with Hashimoto's and that really affects his, his thinking process sometimes. He's, he was showing signs of dementia or what I thought was dementia at the time, but if he has the coconut oil, he's fine, aren't you? It makes a big difference to me. Um, standing in the hallway not knowing whether I'm coming or going to kind of uh, being able to think so much better it makes a huge difference yes and, uh, it's reasonably easy just to pop a teaspoonful in a cup of coffee and, uh, and or you bowl. used to stir it into your porridge at one time as well didn't yeah, you yeah I'll or if you were really bad you just eat a spoonful off the spoon a spoonful off the spoon is not the best but it works as a I think the coffee is the most effective, or the best way I like. Yeah, and coconut oil is is um, solid at room temperature, so it's shelf stable. And the peanut butter there, I was watching a program the other day actually about peanut butter, and they were saying that it's shelf stable because it actually has very low moisture content. It's got a lot of oil in from the peanuts, which actually aren't nuts they're legumes which i hadn't known and it was saying that it's the reason that when you put it in your mouth it kind of dry sucks all the saliva out of your mouth is because it has a very very low water content so that's just a bit of trivia there for you and that's um i have the smooth one neil has the crunchy one and also another thing about the peanut butter is I think when um, I've been talking about it before, you know how your phone listens to you. So if you're talking about a vacuum cleaner or, or a new bed or something, you suddenly get adverts for those things. I was um, showing you the peanut butter in the last video and then all of a sudden I start getting um, recipes pop up for dreamy creamy peanut butter pasta, which I haven't tried to make yet, but it seemed a coincidence that I'm talking about peanut butter one minute and then getting recipes to use it the next. 
Right, next we come up to the honey section. And I buy a lot of honey because uh, we don't buy cough medicine at all. Tests have shown that honey is as effective of co as cough medicine, but of course it doesn't have any drug in it. So you're not um, on one spoonful an hour or whatever it is. It's also um, very good for um, for wound healing as well. I know when uh, when pear when Bear had poorly poor, which uh, we called it poorly poor, he had a, a flesh eating bacterial infection in his paw and very nearly lost his paw at one stage. But the vet was actually at one point dressing it with honey, wasn't she? Yeah. So very good for for wound dressing. Hang on, I'm going to see if I can come up just a tiny bit higher so I can show you. Hold on a minute. This might go horribly wrong. Yeah, the, the Hubbard's, which is only about 75p, I think, is still 100%, where does it say ingredients? 100% uh, honey ingredients. So, for really cheap, then I pay, I used to pay £3.40 for this, but I think this has probably gone up a, a lot since then. That's a set honey, and it's um, pure English it's an organic honey, I think. I'm pretty sure it was organic, but I can't remember now. But, but anyway, that when I started buying it, it was exactly the same price as cough medicine. So that I thought, well, I might just as well buy the honey and we'll have that. So I always keep a good supply of honey there. And then I've also got just a blackcurrant jam and some ginger up there, I think. At the back in the um, wrapped up is another jar of coffee that wouldn't fit lower down out of the six from Costco. We've got Neil's hot chocolate drink and my hot chocolate drink because I have the posh one. Mainly because I don't drink as, as much of it as Neil. So because I have less, I can have a better one. Isn't that right, darling? That's absolutely right, lovely. <laughs> Of course it is because I said so. Then we've got some Branson pickle, some sauerkraut, um, some pickled onions and behind the pickled onions we've got um, pickled gherkins with um, I think they're pepper seeds in there. I'm not sure what the seeds are, I can't remember now, but pickled ger gherkins but because they're, in pic they're pickled they'll last for a long long time then in Sainsbury's yesterday we found these four kilogram bags of semolina for how much were these uh, like three pounds fifty i think yeah about three pound so fifty like reduced pounds from 50. what were they reduced from about five pound fifty so they're about two pounds less and they're two four kilogram bags there and neil loves semolina but it is um is it a uh, bulgar wheat flour? I can't remember. It's oh, I'm not pulling it. I'm stood stood here, <laughs> hanging sorry. onto a camera oh, and, and the frame of the door for dear life. I'm I'm not going to let go <laughs> and start looking to see what's in it. But I'm it's sure. it's semolina. You like it. I think you can also use it for for coating things instead of breadcrumbs. I'm sure I've read that yeah. somewhere. And then marmite. Sainsbury's hasn't had this size for ages they've only had the very big size so i you know love it or hate it i love it so i'd rather buy it in the big size than risk running out uh that's neil's weakness is the uh the chocolate spread he prefers the nutella but the speed that he eats it, I won't spend that much on Nutella because it just goes almost overnight. And every time I think, oh, I fancy some Nutella, it's all gone. Then in the corner there, we've got our our gravity water filter, which uh, we've, we're not using at the moment, but it's there in case of emergencies, which is all it was bought for, was in case of emergencies. But it does seem more and more likely that we're going to get these power cuts that could last for up to seven days and affect pumping stations. Then we've got um, Bisto gravy granules there and then 
own brand gravy granules and very cheap gravy granules that we're going to give a try. The white tubs there are turmeric. I used to make um, our, go our yellow Labrador a golden paste for his arthritis, which was turmeric and coconut oil and black pepper. I think, I can't remember if there was another ingredient. I don't think there was. I found the I found the recipe online, but he absolutely loved it. And it did seem to help. Turmeric's very good, I think, for pain and inflammation. And you'll find, if you just Google golden paste for dogs, then you'll be able to find somebody baking it, I'm sure. Then we've got powdered potato. That brown box is also powdered potato. A couple of tins of potato. And then we've got some suet for dumplings. And then a couple of boxes of stuffing. And then just to the back here we've got uh, dog treats and underneath the, the dog treats we've got dog dentist sticks and somebody was saying um, in my last video about um, about the dog food and the dog treats and pasta attracting mice I have to say we're exceptionally lucky in this house that we've never ever had mice and I've stacked dog food like this for for the last 10 years, I've, I've had multiple bags of dog food stacked at some point in the house and never, ever had a problem with uh, with rodents, fortunately. Then we've got some tin dog food there. And because we feed them the complete dried dog food, they don't actually need this at all. But we just like to give them just a little bit with each meal, just to give it a bit of flavour. You know, it must be a bit grim just having dried, boring dog food. So we just give them a bit of tin food with it, just to give it... When I feed them, I just kind of smear it on the bottom of the bowl and then put the kibble on top. So they eat the kibble first and then have a little while licking the bottom of the bowl. I think you just shove it in any old how, don't you? What's that? Uh, tin dog food with the kibble. I put it in the bottom. And oh, you do put it in the bottom and then now. put the kibble on top. So they have to go through the kibble. Yeah. And then they've got to work for the uh, for the gravy at the bottom. Yeah, so that's my new improved storage in the cupboard. And it makes me feel so happy seeing this cupboard, mainly because it's all tidy and everything that used to be in this cupboard is now just thrown out into the other room and I've got to find homes for it all. But the other thing that I was going to say is um, servings. And per kilo, rice should give you 13 servings. I've got it all written up on my board up there. Um, pasta should give you 11 servings per kilo. Porridge oats, 25 servings for, per kilo. And then I've got the Nido powdered milk. I've got a 400 gram tin and a 1800 gram tin and the 400 gram tin should be just over three litres which is 5.4 pints and the 1800 gram tin is 14 litres which is 24 and a half pints that's UK pints I think American pints are slightly different I'm not I'm, Got a feeling our pints might be slightly bigger than American pints, but I'm not certain. So, like I say, next time we we get delivery of dog food, that will go right up to the to where the that's the stairs there, where it goes white. That's the stairs. So I should imagine that the dog food will go right the way up. So I'm only putting things further back in the cupboard where the dog food will be, where I don't need to access them often. I used to have a pile of dog food in the hallway. In where Echo's kennel is now, I used to have my tumble dryer. And I used to have the dog food stacked in front of the tumble dryer, which meant that I never ever used the tumble dryer because I had to move 150 kilograms of dog food if I wanted to get to it. So eventually... I thought, well, I might just as well sell the dryer because it's not, never used. I think I didn't use a tumble dryer for about five years because the one that I did have was um, on the recall list. 
So when they took that one back, I got a, they exchanged it for a top of the range new one. And I just didn't really like it. it, had all the dog food in front of it. So I sold it and saved myself, God knows how much money drying our clothes as I've always done. All our washing either gets dried outside on the line or hung over the top of the stairs. I will do a video one day showing you how I dry my washing upstairs. Um, but for this video, for the pantry tour, that's it, I think. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some ideas for, for yours. I know I've had some lovely, lovely comments from people that watched the last one. So I hope you've all come back to see the new improved version. And for anybody new to this video, please do like and subscribe. Okay, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Lots of love. Bye.